Order at 7 o'clock, we'll start with a pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank
in conjunction with generally accepted auditing standards in the United States and to express an opinion based on our findings to obtain a reasonable but not absolute assurance that the, the uh, financial statements are not materially misstated. And then the opinion paragraph simply states, in my opinion, the financial statements referred to above present fairly in all material respects, so you have a clean audit. Uh, I'm going to page 15. <laughs> That's good, I like that. <laughs> Uh, move over to page 15. I'm going to go over uh, a few highlights, some things that are probably the most important things for you to, to know about and keep in mind as we're going through the audit. And then if you have any detailed questions after we're finished, then I'm, I'm happy to, to answer any and all questions that you have. Um, this is your balance sheet on page 15. And your general fund, your governmental funds, general fund and your MDD. The things that we look for in your on your balance sheet are one your what's called a current ratio. The current ratio simply describes the ratio between current assets and current liabilities, which describes liquidity and your ability to pay your bills that you've got coming up in the next 12 months. We like to see at least a one to one ratio there, so at least as much cash in the bank as you've got bills coming up in the next 12 months. You have 31 to 1. So your very strong cash position in your general fund. The second thing we look at is fund balance reserve. And what this represents is money that you have on hand in case, you know, it's tough to collect taxes one year or, you know, you're just running behind or, or for some reason that there's some problems with assessments, so on and so forth, and you end up having to be delayed on your collections. We recommend in the general fund that you maintain a 25% fund balance reserve. 25% represents 25% of your total annual expenditures. Okay? So, on page 17, about all oh, two-thirds away down the page, under expenditures, you see total expenditures of $448,000. We take the debt service principal payments out of that amount. That gives you a operating expenditures of $294,000. That's what we base your reserve ratio, your reserve percentage on. And based on that, you have 69% reserve in your general fund. So you're considerably above the required 25% or recommended 25%. Um, if you flip over to page 19, just a couple of things to be aware of here. <clears throat> you, were, you were over budget on revenues and you were over budget on expenditures for the year, but overall the net variance was positive by $14,000. So that's, a, that's good performance on your budget. You really, you really stayed the course on your expenses and you increased your revenues above budget. So that, that was a very good performance indicator. On page 20, statement of net position is really just a balance sheet again. This is of your proprietary funds or your water and sewer fund. What we look for here again is a current ratio and reserves. Current ratio again, we expect at least one to one. Your current assets, the current liabilities, are 2.3 to 1 in your water and sewer fund. So still a very strong liquidity indicator. Your reserves are not quite where they need to be, but you've come up 6% since last year. Your reserves are about 26% uh, this year. Two years ago, you were at 18%. So that's a very strong increase in the last two years. If your performance indicators or performance measurements are the same or equal, equal to or greater than they were this year, next year, then you'll be right in that 33% reserve, which is what's recommended. Um, on page 21, this is basically your income statement for your water sewer fund. Just want to point out that your revenues were up about 6% year over year. 
and your expenses were down 4% year over year. So you have a net positive variance of about 10% in your operating uh, operations of your water and sewer fund. Uh, let's go over to page 29. And really what you need to know here is there are certain things in your fund balance that are able to be used to pay bills with, to pay expenses with, and certain things that are not. You have restricted accounts that can only be used for certain purposes. <clears throat> your municipal debt development district, your debt service, those are both restricted. And then you've got what are called assigned balance of about $10,000 for road maintenance. That's not something that's restricted. You have control over that, but you have assigned it as a governmental unit. So that means you earmark that for road maintenance. Now, if you decide that you don't need that for road maintenance and you want to use it for something else, you certainly have the power and the ability to do that. You just have to, have to vote on it among yourselves. It doesn't require any legal or ordinance action. And then the unassigned or the un totally unrestricted portion is $203,000. Um, the last thing I want to cover is I, I gave you a separate report there, a little two-page report. This is called my management report to you. As part of the audit, we look at qualitative measures as well as quantitative measures. We look at internal controls. We don't audit your internal controls, but we look at internal controls. Uh, we look at segregation of duties, we look at cash handling, we look at document handling, we look at uh, organizational uh, ability, we look to make sure that when we ask for a document, is it given to us in a timely manner or do you have to search for it? Do we have to ask for things over and over again? Are we given what we need the first time? Uh, are there any disagreements while going through the audit? Um, are all of the adjustments made timely? Those sorts of things are all looked at. And you'll be happy to know we didn't have any uh, problems in any of those areas. Everything was given to us in a timely manner. Everything was accurate. Everything tied back to your financial statements and your financial software. Your system reports are very, very close to your, your um, financial software. Those kinds of things are always off a little bit. Don't ask me why, but the software companies can't seem to get it right. But um, overall, a very, very good audit. Um, no, no significant findings. I'm sure as soon as Linda returns, she'll, uh, she'll get all the adjusting entries made. She always does, and she will uh, certainly ask me if she has any questions. That's all I have officially. If you would like to ask me any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them for you. Mark? Um, can you briefly describe your this the SKE requirement that we... So you skills, knowledge, and, and experience? Yeah. We're required for governmental entities to assess whether management um, has the necessary skills, knowledge, and experience to, to manage the audit process so that we can remain independent. If we're having to teach management how to do accounting, if we're having to show uh, the management how to maintain documentation and how to record journal entries and things of that nature, then we can't be independent in our examination because then we're basically auditing our own work. So a couple of years ago, the <coughs> County Standards Board started to require auditors to uh, keep documentation on the skill and knowledge and experience levels of management for government entities. And so we have to document that as part of our work papers, part of our files. Uh, and it's looked at when we have our peer reviews uh, because if they are not satisfied with the 
reasons that we give that, that satisfy the SKE findings, then they could disqualify the audit. You're very fortunate um, to have someone as knowledgeable and experienced as the mayor and Linda. Um, and Summer, she has been here for quite a number of years now. Uh, the books are very well kept. Uh, they're, everything is reconciled. Um, there were really no uh, hints of anything, uh, of any wrongdoing. Uh, we always question about whether there's any indicators of fraud. Uh, there were none. Your, your separation of duties, your segregation of duties are strong. Uh, the mayor and Linda both do different parts, different things, <coughs> on managing the financial statements. So you've got good, strong controls. Uh, you're one of the few towns that actually has an ordinance uh, written or a policy written on your internal controls. Um, and I have a copy of that. So it helps me tremendously when I put my report together for my peer reviewer to have those sorts of things because it strengthens the assessment that I make with regard to SKE. So that's that's the thing. Very good. Um, the only other thing I would bring up on um, on a couple of the numbers, if you read the, the MDNA at the front, the magic discussion, there's a paragraph which explains some of the stuff. But one of the issues that we have, which is a little bit ironic, is that when you look and say we were over budget by you know ten thousand dollars on a certain line, there, the problem we had this year was we had insurance claims. So like when our roof got hailed like everybody else. We got a check for $30,000, and we spent $30,000 to fix the roof. But they both go into the, against the budget. So it's like, well, our revenues were up by $30,000, more than the plan, and the expenses were up by $30,000. We really weren't over. It was an offset. But when you look at the real, so for instance, in the utility fund, we again had an insurance, we had lightning take out three of our pumps. So the good news is it's fully insured. So we get a check for $25,000 from the insurance company, and then we turn around and spend $26,000 on pumps. We have $1,000 on deck. So our budget was perfect. Our budget is right. It's just if you take these, these two things out, we're on the money. So that's some of our issues we have. They're very minor, <coughs> these one-off issues. And that's why um, when you look at some of these things, it's frustrating when I look at some of the numbers. Because we're not going to do a budget amendment for something that's washing. It's a wash. But um, other than that, does anybody, anybody have any questions for Wayne? Appreciate you guys for you to be here. All right, Wayne, well, I as appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks, as, sir. As I, as I say every year, if you think of something later, I know this is riveting. And <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so you might want to pick it up and read it, but uh, if not, don't worry about it. But if you have any questions, if you ever have any questions about about anything, I'm always happy to answer for you. Okay. Thank All right. you. All right. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. All right. Next up, we have one. Oh, we have discussion. We have to accept it. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. All right, so I need a motion to um, accept the uh, audit. I'll make a motion to accept the audit. I'll second. Mm -hmm. All right, so Darren, second. All right, all those in favor? All right, thank you very much. Thanks, Clint. That's why we have more. There's like three of you. <laughs> there's an unknown. Here's an dispute, right? All right, next up, <clears throat> next up on the agenda, we have consideration of the uh, outdoor lighting ordinance. So, uh, if anybody had a chance to go through it, I have several 
about half a dozen questions on my own. Ed, that's okay. Well, <clears throat> I thought I would take uh, maybe a few minutes uh, to kind of <clears throat> go into a little bit more detail. We didn't go into a lot of detail last week or last month. It was kind of an introduction sort of a thing. So, uh, at a very high level, the ordinance is about 14 pages long. It's got 15 sections, 10 of which are what I would term operational, five of which are legal. And uh, the, uh, the whereases, and there are seven of them, <coughs> uh, indicate the, the reasons why we feel it's important to have an outdoor lighting ordinance. And real quickly, I'll just go down here and uh, mention a few of them. Uh, the one thing I do remember we talked about last time was <coughs> with potentially new residential developments with uh, the remainder of the uh, uh, developed part of the uh, city limit, within the city limit. <coughs> we want to ensure that we have a consistent and a definitive lighting ordinance for that. Uh, everyone knows we're adjacent to Lake Louisville and there are wildlife uh, conservation areas and so this ordinance helps protect that uh, natural wildlife. Um, there's also, uh, the ordinance seeks to prevent uh, light pollution. Uh, a number of different kinds of light pollution to include glare, sky, glow, light trespass, and so forth. Um, and then uh, lastly, there is um, <clears throat> a desire on our part to serve as a positive example for other communities that surround our town. So those are the reasons. The next section deals with uh, uh, definitions. And there's really only about six of them that you need to fully understand, I think, to understand the rest of the ordinance. The first one is on page two, which is color, uh, correlated color temperature. And uh, it's a specification for color of light emitted by a lamp. There's a, a range of uh, different colors. <coughs> and uh, the temperature is measured in Kelvins. And in a little bit, I'll share with you uh, in where we have noted what the Kelvin standard uh, should be via this ordinance. The next one is fully shielded fixture. <coughs> Pardon my voice. Um, <coughs> If you were riding around town currently, I doubt that, that you would find a, a fully shielded fixture, except for the 19 or 20 uh, lights that we uh, recently uh, installed or had co-serve installed for the uh, bar lights. I, I know I don't have one light on my house that is fully shielded. And fully shielded just simply means that the fixture is constructed in such a way that the light is projected downward. There's no light escape being above a 90 degree uh, angle, I guess, if you will, above the fixture. And <clears throat> obviously the intent there is to keep the light from going up and uh, to uh, enable us to uh, protect the night sky. Um, then on uh, page three, uh, lumens, initial lamp lumens, is the number of lumens of light emitted by a lamp uh, when new and not counting any depreciation due to age of the lamp. So that basically is another way of it's a measuring, measuring the brightness of the light. And the, the, uh, the ordinance uh, sets uh, some thresholds for uh, number of lumens as well. Uh, and then further down on page three, light trespass is also an important element of this. It's uh, defined as unwanted light falling on public or private property from any location external to that property. So it requires uh, all property owners to keep the lighting on their property on the property and not being extended to uh, any of their neighbors. On page four, we talked earlier about uh, fully shielded, there's also partially shielded, <clears throat> and that is um, determined to be, it's the same concept except that it allows 10% of the, the brightness of the light to be extended above 
the uh, 90 degree uh, angle, if you will. Uh, it's not preferred, but uh, it, it does give everyone a little bit more uh, uh, choice, if you will, in terms of the lights that they may put on the property. Then uh, on page five, the key there is uh, unshielded, which I've already mentioned. Unshielded means there's, there's the light is just thrown wherever. The, the best <clears throat> example of an unshielded light are the street lights in the shores. I mean, they're, they're, they're bulbs that have actually, absolutely no protection as far as preventing the light from escaping up toward the sky. <clears throat> so the next section is the general section. There's a couple things that I think are important here. Uh, first being uh, A, which says that all new replacement private public lighting installed after the date of the effect of this ordinance shall comply with this with its provisions, with the ordinance's provisions. And then following that, uh, the town, meaning the town uh, government, if you will, shall change and install all new public outdoor lighting uh, within the city and rights of way and on city-owned property to meet the requirements of this ordinance as luminaires or lights expire, as fixtures expire. And then the third, which is also very important, is uh, any new lighting, including street lighting, <clears throat> shall make use of timers, dimmers, motion sensors, and other adaptive controls, and shall be substantially dimmed or extinguished uh, by 11 p.m. every evening, unless safety concerns demand otherwise. That's public lighting. Public lighting. Right. Yes. Private lighting. I'm sorry. Yeah, it is public lighting. So that's kind of <clears throat> basically we've got in the leaders. Yes. Um, okay, and so uh, the, the last important item in this section is G, which is an attachment, A, which is at the very last page of the ordinance draft. And it gives uh, examples of acceptable and unacceptable or not compliant and compliant types of fixtures. So it's a, it's a nice reference uh, because there's thousands of different types of lights out there and these would highlight uh, a lot of them. So it's a nice little reference for everyone. So then the next section talks about existing light fixtures. Uh, and it defines situations of destruction, major additions, and uh, vacant structures for uh, what would need to be done as far as replacement lighting. Um, I won't go into a lot of detail, but that basically is what the purpose of that section is. And section four is... <clears throat> but, uh, but I think you have to be clear. You can't make somebody replace their lights. You can't take functioning lights and make them replace. It has to be one they wear out. Well, according to the ordinance as it stands, everyone has 10 years. But, right. no, we can't force people to change. But at, as lights expire, quit working, and they're replaced, right. they right. should be replaced with uh, yes. the right types of pushers. I guess right. Yeah. <coughs> you can't legally, if it's, if it's, if it's a legal light, and it's working. Yes. You can't make that's a takings. You can't make somebody take something legal and replace it. It has to be when it's expired. Or ten years. When it's dead. Or ten years. I don't think you can do the ten years. I think it has to be when it expires. Well, it's not <clears throat> not as it's written now. No, I, I know it. I, but, we um, have to, I think we have to ask Andy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, yeah. Andy has not seen this yet. And I think that's the next step. We'll yeah. To, right? yeah. Does the IDA do they have? Uh, the do they have to put some sort of light a requirement. a requirement timeline that every everybody has to be in compliance? Yes, they do. I thought that. Yeah, yeah, they do. A larger city could probably do that, but we're we're bound by local government, so it's just not something we can really. Yeah, but they do have that requirement. Is there a penalty? <clears throat> There are penalties, and we can get to that later on. <coughs> it's in the, <coughs> excuse me, my, what's in, my, in the last section. Is that all you had, Mark? Well, we'll, we'll keep going. Oh, okay. I, was, I think that's, yeah, if we're going to get to some of the other agenda items, we're going to talk a little bit about 
what is a taking and what is not a taking. Okay. There's a lot of litigation on when you something that's illegal and you take it away from somebody. Yeah. Okay. That that's a problem in Texas. Okay, that's great. And if anyone has any questions about any you know any particular section that I'm kind of giving a high overview of, please <laughs> interrupt. <clears throat> okay, uh, section four uh, uh, is in. I'm sorry. There's a lot of houses that have spotlights that illuminate the house angles, etc. Uh, how does that fall within? Particularly <laughs> since those lights are facing up. Yeah, it's called up lighting. Right. <clears throat> and uh, in those situations where the uh, the lights are under overhangs. Where it doesn't extend above the overhangs, those are acceptable. Makes sense. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no problem. So I see you've got the greater than, less than signs now. Then. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I Is that Clint? I, did that? You did that. I forgot my, what was that, trig? Yeah. <laughs> um, it was above algebra, I think. I, it's been a long time. Anyway, here are the standards uh, on uh, item C, section four, that we talked about the Kelvins as far as the correlated color temperature. Uh, the threshold is no more than 3,000 kelvins. And then as far as lumens, uh, to be fully shielded, uh, anything equal to or greater than 1,500 lumens, which would be required to be fully shielded. Um, anything uh, greater than or equal to 800, but less than 1,500 would require being partially shielded. And anything less than or equal to 800 lumens uh, would re not require any uh, shielding at all. So, uh, generally, for example, walk walkway lights, you know, the little things like that, they don't require, so I mean, 800 lumens, I don't know if I can, I probably can't very quickly equate it to a light bulb, but uh, there are a lot of lights, let me just say, that are less than 800 lumens. Okay? And then, uh, Secondly, in this section, uh, it also re restricts light trespass. We've already talked a little bit about that and the glare from adjacent properties. Um, and then uh, we talked about the barn lights. Barn lights are not, uh, so people, barn lights can exist. The only requirement according to the way that the ordinance is written is that they uh, need to have an opaque reflector because, again, there's nothing on that barn light that, you know, it's, part, it's probably minimally shielded just because the fixture is on top, uh, below, uh, you know, the tin top. But for the most part, the light is extended above the fixture itself. So it just has to have a, a, a reflector on it so that it doesn't reflect light up, upward. Um, I have a question about eye. Okay. 